state reopenings and government relief for small businesses were expected to help get some of the laid-off workers off unemployment benefits and back to work. So far, the data does not show that's happening. The unemployment rates we are now seeing 15 to 39 percent depending on how you measure will become permanent. Economists said the May employment report could show the loss of millions of jobs and possible revisions in April's job losses of 20.5 million. The government has no money to pay for these people. Printed money is an illusion and has zero value. Paying non-productive people with worthless money does not create a sustainable society. Most big banks will disappear as the financial system implodes. Most hedge funds will go under in the coming collapse as counterparties fail and derivatives become worthless. Private equity has destroyed many good companies by lumbering them with heavy debt and taking all the equity out. Panic and fear triggered the worst economic crisis. The virus had little to do with it. Fake money created by a private bank called the Fed is the cause of the coming greatest depression. There is the finger on the wound. The fact that we are living in an illusion, that we get betrayed and manipulated and degenerated and stupidated. The deeper one looks, the more sick one can feel. The global economy is way beyond repair at this point. The fix is to crash the whole goddamn thing and start anew with a correct set of premises. Lace is fair. We are already not just in a recession, but in the greatest depression of the US history. Because, one, the financial system was a house of cards, could collapse at any time. Global banks would be among the first to topple, taking billionaires with them. Two, unsustainable sovereign and private sector debt. Rising interest rates would result in rapid default. This is true of the USA, Europe, perhaps China, Brazil, and Japan. 3. China is rising. 4. The security state keeps adopting new technology to gain more and more control, pervasively more granular and intrusive. 5. China was surviving the trade war. 6. Russia is surviving sanctions. 7. The USA has lost Iraq and Afghanistan. Iran refuses to submit. 8. Saudi and USA is losing in Yemen. 9. Powerful lobbies keep demanding more war, more weapons, more money. 10. Gulf allies cozying up to Syria, allying against Turkey and the USA. The country is morally and monetary bankrupt. Debt-based economies will always fail. Money can be printed. Wealth cannot. The economy was stuffed, it still is, long before the black swan, in this case, Wuhan virus, arrived. This shutdown was never about the virus, it's about the money. About the Fed bailing out the sick banks, about stopping the bottomless pit of runaway debt interest rates. The world banksters had two choices after September 2019. Shut down the economy or lose control of the dollar. The Federal Reserve has made one mistake after another to inflate one bubble after another. And this particular bubble was already deflating before the coronavirus pin put a gaping hole in it. Now the air is coming out much faster, and all they can think of is, how can we fill it back up again, how can we reflate the bubble? Ultimately, they're going to destroy the dollar in the process. What people really need to be vaccinated against is the massive inflation that the Fed is going to unleash. We may succeed in temporarily recovering from a depression to a recession. But then the economy is going to roll back over into depression again. What's going to make this depression particularly painful is going to be the rapid escalation in the cost of living. So it's going to be a combination of much higher consumer prices and, ultimately, long-term interest rates, as well as unemployment and a weak economy. The dollar is already defying gravity, it should already be coming down. I think once it starts to fall, it's going to implode. Inflation, by definition, is the expansion of the money supply. We've never seen inflation like this in America. The money supply is growing at the fastest rate in US history. The year of a year, it's up about 25%. The Fed's balance sheet is just skyrocketing. Most of that increase in the money supply happened in the last six weeks. The amount of inflation that the Fed will be creating in the weeks and months ahead is going to be even greater than the amount that it's already created. Inflation is a tax, and it's the most vicious tax because it hits the most vulnerable. It hits the lower class, the working poor people who have savings, it destroys the value of a lifetime of savings, it destroys the value of the wages and salaries that people earn. We're paying for the government through inflation literally. Right now, half of every dollar the government is spending has been borrowed. We are borrowing right now as much money as we're collecting in taxes, and soon we'll be borrowing more than we're paying in taxes. But since the Fed is monetizing most of that debt, the American public is going to pay for all that government through inflation, rather than through taxation. Depressions are not economic events, they are the result of usurious forces using debt-based fractional reserve counterfeit currency based on nothing. And those forces ruthless use of credit expansion and contraction. The real problems and thus the real coming economic history will be a cascade of mutually reinforcing feedback loops across all economic aggregates and all regional or national economies. 
deflating a debt bubble inflated by more than 50 years of central bank and government politics, will probably take around 20 years. CV19 is just a perfect distraction and excuse. A recession is when my neighbor is out of work, a depression is when I am out of work. A depression is when your banker takes your house with only a piece of paper. Do we have a name for what is worse than a depression yet? How about the great chasm? Or the great abyss? Or the bottomless pit? Or how about the years of reckoning? Or the extermination period of usury? The slough of despond from Pilgrim's Progress. The great destruction. The great pink sock. The great heist. Because that's exactly what it is. That's what it always is. We talk about it 24 hours, 7 days, 365 days here, but the general public is asleep at the wheel. The seventh circle of hell. The great reset apocalypse. I think that for 95% of the people, this virus is a nothing burger, but that does not mean it can be the catalyst for total economic Armageddon, which is happening right now, in real time, before our very eyes. There should never have been any lockdown. No one should have been bailed out. And no one should have been quarantined. Quarantine the sick rather than placing everyone under house arrest. Once the immunocompromised die and the healthy people gain immunity, this is a nothing burger. We can't delay the inevitable. People are going to die because they ate junk food and sat in front of a television, not because a virus is finally taking them out. HOTUS is correct on this. We need to open our economy now. This shutdown charade must end, or the fallout will eclipse anything that this virus would bring. Americans need to start pushing back against draconian lockdowns. The death of commerce is coming, and it is coming fast. Unemployment will be the highest it's ever been in the entire history of the USA, if they don't end this lockdown soon. Several small businesses have closed their doors permanently. This is a deliberate calling of small businesses. Corporate bailouts and nationalization are occurring on a massive scale. Meanwhile, the small business rescue program is out of money. We should be doing what America did during the Spanish flu outbreak. No one was allowed in public places without face coverings. The same should have been done today instead of this shutdown or takeover. The next phase of social distancing and contact tracing puts you in a FEMA camp. Absolutely, the whole thing is an epic farce, and you're supposed to clap like trained monkeys. Stage 1, Recession. Stage 2, Depression. Stage 3, Suspension. Stage 4, Extermination. Guess which stage we're in. We will soon reach a critical tipping point when the American public realizes that it has been forsaken. This will be a difficult time in America, one where the nation may not survive. For all the people who have zero net debt, we take no comfort. It will be strange to see how asset values fluctuate over the next few years, especially residential real estate. The Obama restructuring produced Blackstone and other investment groups to buy distressed homes, now all rentals. Even copper is worth buying in the tsunami of confetti that the Fed's printing. We are slaves to the printing presses, and our labor and industry are being skimmed with the issuance of funny money. There was a time when I thought they were hanging in with debt so that it could be offset by the discovery of commercial fusion technology to supply virtually free electricity, but like unobtainium is not likely to save the day. The greatest danger from the collapse of the fiat debt system is conflict both within and between nations. It only took two months to destroy the entire Main Street economy. It is on life support right now. The patient is dead. There will be no recovery. Entire markets for the product were essentially deleted, and that loss of revenue can never be made up. The lifeline pittance from the government may allow some businesses to keep operating with no revenue or real working employees for a month and a half, but that is it. It is just delaying the absolute carnage. The only solution is isolating those at greatest risk and reopening the economy, period. If you get sick, go home and rest for two weeks with a government backstop on lost wages if your company can't pay. If you are one of the unfortunate few that goes to an ICU, sorry, but you drew the short straw. Life ain't fair. You probably would have ended up there anyway. There are around 9 million Americans whose tickets are punched over the next three years. Some are children. Some are 99 years old. Many will die of the flu. Some will die when they trip on a raised edge of a sidewalk. That's life. You can't stop death. If we do not reopen the economy immediately, all commerce dies. I have talked about the death of commerce before. It was an inevitable outcome of our Wall Street obsession, but this virus shutdown accelerated the process to the point of 100% casualties. They are assuming their worst-case model will come true here, without disclosing their underlying findings. This virus isn't understood and will probably morph, resulting in unpredictable consequences for mortality and reinfection stats. Worst case. It morphs into a nasty demon that keeps everyone sequestered into their depressed holes, subsisting off Uncle Sam. Whatever you do. Don't tax the rich. That will cause big systemic problems. Make the taxpayer pay for their socialized income. In America, the money was supposed to belong to the people. Not the banker or politicians or governments. 
laws were unlawfully changed to steal from the people. The value of the dollar, measured in real goods, has constantly been falling since 1913. Yes, sometimes faster than others, but always falling. To measure one fiat currency against others is fundamentally bogus. The reason is obvious. That gives the impression something is increasing, value of the dollar, when, in fact, that something is decreasing, value of the dollar. Since precious metals are manipulated out the wazoo the past few decades, a chart against them isn't accurate either. So one would need to revert to measures against baskets of fundamental goods, which means goods that are necessary, or near necessary, to basic life, and have been for centuries, or at least many decades. All that's needed to assure the dollar descend at an even faster rate, is for the Federal Reserve to create and widely distribute substantial quantities of fiat, fake, fraud, fiction, fantasy, fractional reserve debt bits, which they are doing in spades lately. There is no algorithm that is 100% unbiased. In simple terms, no algorithm is 100% truthful. Truth hurts some, and untruth helps others. Don't you think that current markets have reached the point where there are no more, or a diminishing few, bait fish in the water? If you cannot recognize the sucker at the table, who then is the sucker? The Federal Reserve System needs casualties. Don't become one. It might require a 50-year depression to get back to a world and an economy not controlled by the Fed. What those thieves have brought on us all is going to be historic. Have you seen even one single list on who the corporate or company they are giving our tax money to? What were the priorities, and who decided those? We are giving away several trillion in taxpayer money, and don't have a clue who is getting it or why. This must have been the most thrilling cigar smoke-filled closed-door discussion in the history of mankind. Politicians dancing around Washington chanting, we have trillions to give away, who wants them, and what do you have for us? The debt for every single man woman and American child is $20,000 with this new CV-19 bill. The disease would have caused economic hardship, but the worst of it is the overreaction of the governments around the world. This is unprecedented in world history, nothing like it. Crony capitalism has left too much of the electorate behind and shown itself so poor at dealing with crises. Not only that, but the wrong people also get bailed out every time. It's eating itself. The USA is going to fall into depression and socialism. Our economy is so large that even trying to keep it on life support through socialism will bankrupt us before the year is over. We would just be adding zeros to the national debt. The world could smell what we are shoveling and would have no part of it. Socialism is not a system. It is a dystopia. Capital exists by force of nature. The drive of each individual to assert rights of self-determination. To gain the maximum amount of satisfaction with the least amount of resources, including labor. That is the typical result of a collapsing democracy. The government attempts to maintain control, instead of allowing a reset to occur, their interventions lead to unemployment and ultimately reduced living standards, which they then promise to partially restore by more intervention. That cycle repeats until full-blown communism is reached. Socialism and depression go hand in hand. They'll be attempting to take gold soon just like FDR, once the economy really tanks. We are already in socialism. That's why there's going to be a depression. Republicans and Democrats don't care about debt anymore, just print more money. Did anyone ever doubt that the whole problem lies in the excessive greed in the financial markets, and how insider make fortunes for themselves and those around them at the toss of a coin, while loosing for the public in the same toss? Wake up, it is all rigged. A few days ago, during food riots in Chile reported asked older women why is she rioting, and she said that she is hungry because the government doesn't provide her with free money. This is ultimately the fate of many parts all over the world in a few years. Whole generations of zombies who can't last one week without government nanny. I have a firm belief that humans are incapable of democracy as they have proved after the gold standard was dropped in 1971, they will always vote in the idiot who promises more new debt. Global debt end of the year will be at $270 trillion or close to 500% of GDP, before derivatives bubble or unfunded liabilities. This shithouse is going down no matter what propaganda index says. The problem is that what is coming is even worse than democracy. Opportunity wasted, but then again, maybe 2% of humans just want to enjoy life in peace, and the other 98% are by design collectivist non-player characters. The illusion of freedom will continue as long as it's profitable to continue the illusion. At the point where the illusion becomes too expensive to maintain, they will just take down the scenery, they will pull back the curtains, they will move the tables and chairs out of the way, and you will see the brick wall at the back of the theater. Frank Zappa This was Everything Inside Me channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe and healthy.